We're excited to be here for day six of our program, The Purpose Driven Life. And thank you so much to everyone who's been part of this program. Um, we've been receiving all the amazing comments and responding to them on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. We're live on Facebook, we're live on Instagram, and then we're recording this for YouTube. So thank you so much and welcome on board. Um, here in the UK, it's really, really late in the night, like um, 11, 13 in the night. We are just trying different times to see how this fits into everybody's program. Um, but we'll see how this goes because, again, we still have lots of activities during the day. And especially at night, too, we get, you know, to try and relax and get ready for the next day. Giving me time as well to read through the book and put the ideas together in order for me to present it. So... It's just various things we're trying, but we're excited to be here every day to work with you, to read with you this book, this amazing book that is such a life-changing book. I mean, so far, chapter six, and I feel really energized and ready to carry on with my life. So, like we've been doing, feel free to send us questions, feel free to do a big shout out to us and we'll shout out to you as well. And... Feel free to be part of this. It's a 40-day program and this is day six, so we still have a long a long way to go. Okay, so today we're looking at chapter six, like I said, and I'm going to delve really quickly into it so we don't waste anybody's time. So, chapter six says, Life is a temporary assignment. That's the title. Life is a temporary assignment. Again, what I've said to people who've been part of us is, um, if there's anything that you've, you know, heard us talk about so far that's making sense to you if you've noticed any changes in your life if you begin you started bringing all this into your life and it's making sense please feel free to write us about it because we really want to change our life and that's how we call it a new life so for me personally going forward is really really been amazing uh, reading through this book is making me feel a lot lighter you know that feeling where you, you thought you had so much weight to carry because remember what started me on this journey I was having lots of issues worries here worries there emotional worries financial worries marital worries and I was just piling all of this up and I was getting to that stage where I had no clue what to do next so that was what made me get to this point and I thought let me read something so it's a spiritual journey. It's a journey where you begin to understand the real person that you are. Where you no longer just align yourself to be led by the world. Um, and lots of people call it the ego. The ego then determines what you become. But here, we're taking it to the spirit. Where the spirit then guides us and tells us what we should do. And so, it's an amazing journey. So, chapter 6. It starts with the Lord reminds me how brief my lifetime my time on earth will be he reminds me that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away and this is in psalm 39 verse 4 so the lord remind me how brief my time on earth will be reminds me that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away psalm 39 verse 4 he goes on again, he says, I am here on earth just for a while. I'm here on earth just for a while. So that's Psalm 119 verse 19. Now, this is a huge thing for all of us. Because once you know that you stay here, it's only for a while. It's for a brief time. Then you start wondering, what, why are we worrying so much? Why are we piling on all this heaviness? Why are we taking on all this, you know, grief, sadness, and pain? Why all of that when it's only for a short period? And in the last chapter, we read where he told us that we may live for just about 100 years. And that's when we are really at the top end of it. And I read in the Bible as well, Psalm, Psalm 90. We will live for just about 70. And when our body can carry us, that actually... I thought about that all night while I was sleeping. When our body can carry us. So I started wondering, what does that mean? It means when we're in a healthy state of, you know, when we are healthy. Because just remember, as we grow older, we start getting weaker. 
and then we start picking up all kinds of illnesses and things start to happen to us. So that's when the body can no longer carry us. Because remember, the body is just like a shell for our spirit. So the minute the body starts getting weak and fragile, it's time for the spirit to move on. So that's why that statement is so big, when our body can carry us. So what role are we playing in order to help our body to continue to carry our spirit? So remember, our time here is very short. And once we know it is short, then what is the need for all that worry? What is the need for all that anger, all, all that sadness, and all that envy, and all that jealousy that we take on constantly? Anyway, so that was the first set of quotes he gave us. He said, our life here is a temporary assignment. So if nothing bothers you in life, this statement should. And life here is a temporary assignment. So to me, that is a huge one again. We're only here temporary. What is the stress about? What's the envy about? What's the jealousy about? What's the sadness about? What's this depression about? He said, to make the best use of life, we must never forget two facts. There are two facts that we must remember if we want to make the best use of this life that we live in. He said, life is extremely brief. No matter who you are, no one is made to last forever. That is so real. I mean, as a Christian, we know that Jesus lasted only in his 30s. And that's our Savior. God did not keep him and say, stay up to 100 to prove your point. So, if we know that our life here is very brief, we need to wake up. Number two, he said, earth is a temporary residence. He went for that to explain, this is even further in the book where he's explaining that, imagine yourself traveling to another country and you know that you're gonna be there for only a short while before you go back home to the country you came from. That's how our life here on earth is. It's a temporary residence. And so we do not own this earth. We all come and go. So that is amazing. Just look around you, your great-grandma, your grandma, your, you know, your uncle, you know, lots of people. And I have a good example. It is best we don't get too attached. We should therefore ask God, to help us see life on earth the same way he sees it for us. So we know it's temporary. We know we're not gonna be here long. What we should do is ask our creator to help us see life the way he is seeing it for us. So that all the aggravation will disappear. He says, the Bible says it repeatedly. The Bible says it, it compares life on earth to temporary living in a foreign country. That's the one I just explained earlier. This is not your final or permanent destination. We're just passing through, just visiting Earth. This just makes you start to think again. We're just passing through. This is not your final or permanent destination. We're just passing through, just visiting Earth. And it says, Bible calls it alien. We're aliens on this earth. We're pilgrims on this earth. We're foreigners on this earth. We're strangers on this earth. We're visitors on this earth. We're travelers on this earth. And this is why I know there are, there are those campaigners who get really upset when you start hearing things like it's happening right now in the U.S. where countries have been banned. There are certain countries that cannot even bother looking for visa to travel to the U.S. because they are not even going to give them. And I had a friend here who, you know, had visited the U.S. A, you know, a few times, and suddenly she went to get visa to visit the, recently, and she was told no. She was she was refused the visa. So now you're wondering, what demarcates a country to the point now that they feel they would not let other people visit that country? So that's just how it is. But when we really look at it, we're all here on earth as foreigners. We're all here on earth as visitors, as aliens, as pilgrims. So why then does one country feel they have such power not to let somebody visit another country? But that's just the way life is right now. 
But we should remember as humans that our stay here is very temporary. You see, I can relate to this. Um, I can relate to this as my mother, and this is me now talking. Based on all these things about how we are complete visitors on this earth, I can relate to it. My mom died when I was about five or six years old. So I never really experienced what it, what it felt like to have a mom. And then my dad died not long after that. I just left university. My dad was gone. It wasn't long after that. My immediate older brother died. Not long again after that, my elder sister died. Not long ago after that, my oldest brother died. So I can relate to people coming and going. And that's why I was saying you can now look around you. And you remember, you remember friends that you went to school with. I remember friends I went to school. Only recently, one of my husband's friends who died. And we know people that we've been with, chatted, we played with, you know, talked about, laughed and joked, and they're suddenly gone. So that just gets the message really clearly to you that we are just temporary. We're just here as visitors, as aliens, as the Bible has told us. No need for the pains we carry through life because it serves no purpose. So it's for us to start reorganizing the way we see life. And like he's clearly said, we need to be speaking to our Creator to say, help us see life the way you want us to see it. So it's real believers in God understands that there is far more to life than just a few years we live on this earth. So if you truly believe in God, this is when you should start thinking. Yes, there's really far more to life. Just a quick one, someone sent me a message from YouTube and was wondering how could, how could they join me on Facebook. So if you are on a friend of ours on YouTube and you want to be part of the live activities going on on Instagram and Facebook, on Instagram you just go on there and search at World of Braiding, at World of Braiding, that's where we're actually uh, taking the live broadcast from, but otherwise I also have at Joy Fido on Instagram and I have a few others like my African Uto site where I call it at African Queen and the Queen is Q-U-3-E-E-N um, then on Facebook all you have to do is go on to Facebook and search for Joy Fido Joy Fido on Facebook and then you ask to be my friend so you send me a friend request and when you do that, I will accept you. And thereafter, whenever we're coming live, Facebook notifies you. The same thing Instagram does as well. It notifies you when we're coming live. So I hope that's clarified that. I just remembered so that, you know, we don't get that same question again. So real believers in God understand that there is far more to life than just a few years we live on this earth. It says when you take on this understanding, you find there is no need to aim to have it all that is so profound because that's what all of us tend to do we constantly i call it the rat race rat race as in you wake up every morning and there's no rest there are people who just want to walk 24 7. you live on this earth and you really can't you know you remember when in the earlier chapters it says we're like gyroscopes and all we do we just spin around and going nowhere that's what it is. If we know that we're here on a temporary basis, why are we chasing this? I want to have it all. Nobody's saying don't do what you have to do to survive, but giving yourself such grief in order to, you know, most people just in the end die from chasing, chasing things that they really should not chase anymore. You see, I always think about, I always think about this when, oh, that's me now. We're trying to have it all. And this is my thought. I'm a Nigerian and I know what it's like in my country. We have these politicians. It's such a well-known fact. And you hear about the corrupt politicians. And all they want to do is to defraud the country. So people kill people. People do all kinds of ridiculous things just to get into that position of power. And when they get there, 
then they amass all this wealth unto themselves. Now question is, from what we're reading here, where are they taking it to? Because you are only a visitor here. You're not going to be here forever. And so what they tend to do, they go around the world buying houses all over the place. They go into various countries and open various ridiculous bank accounts and fill it up with money that they've stolen from the country. While the real citizens or the other citizens are struggling to find public transport to take them anywhere. I know all about it because when I was in Nigeria, I take all the options. I'm taking public transport in the lowest of forms just to experience what people are dealing with. And yes, people are struggling. But no one person has just taken all their money and putting some account across the world and this country is using that money to enrich themselves because they're giving it out to their citizens as business loans for them to run businesses. But no, we've taken it away from our country, from our people. We're not building any infrastructure in that country. We're not creating jobs. We're just leaving the people to be desperate. And that makes them happy. And they, they'll transport their children on first class tickets just to show that they have wealth. But the Bible says we are only aliens here. We're pilgrims. And yes, you. I, I, there was one that I was. There was a classmate of mine in the university, and this man, after all the atrocities he committed, he's gone now. So where is that? Where was? What was the need for all that amassing of wealth that you did not work for? So that is something we need to think about. It ends nowhere. It all ends here on earth. That's what this man is telling us. Bible is clear about all this. He says, friends, this world is not your home. So don't make yourself cozy in it. Cozy is comfortable. I, I own it all. That's the attitude. Don't indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. And so remember that this physical body is just a shell. It's a shell to accommodate the soul that's the person that we are. And so when we do all these things we do, it says we are going to risk putting our soul in the wrong place in order just to keep this ego, this physical being here in happiness. Because there is no need for what we do. We should be thinking about what's going to happen eventually to the soul, which we don't know right now. But what is the point? of taking on things that we know we're not going to take anywhere when it's done, when this temporary stay is done. He said, those in frequent contact with the things of the world should make good of them without becoming attached to them. So if you find you, you, you're in a position where you can contribute to the world, like I'm doing now, I had access to this book and I thought, oh my goodness, the information in here is absolutely useful and beneficial to as many people as there as possible. Let me share the message. And that's my way of contributing. And so he says, for this, um, he says, those in frequent contact with the things of the world should make good use of them without becoming attached to them. For this world and all it contains will pass away. Big message. Everything in here will pass away. Now, I understand this as Pass away doesn't mean the world is passing away while you are standing here. No, we pass away while the world remains. So that's a big message. And that's a message that everyone that comes and goes has a fixed time. So it's only when we remember that life is a test. We read that in the last part um, chapter. Life is a test. Every experience we go through is a test. Life is a trust. Every skill, every knowledge you go through is a problem. And a temporary assignment. So, will the appeal... I'm sorry, I've just got this part a bit wrong. Every, every a trust, life is a trust. So every skill that we have, every knowledge that we have, all of them are temporary assignments. And they will only appeal. Sorry, I got, 
I lost this hope. But they will go tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. So that's a big message we have to take on. The things we see now will be gone. They are here today, but they are gone tomorrow. But the things we can see now will last forever. The fact that earth is not our ultimate home explains. Yeah, explains why we experience difficulty, sorrow, and rejection in this world most of the times. So everything we're going through, most times when we feel down and, and feel sad, is because our body just knows that this earth is not our permanent residence. It explains why some of God's promises seem unfulfilled, and some prayers seem unanswered, and some circumstances seem unfair. Because this is not our hope. So in order to keep us from becoming too attached to it, God allows us to feel a significant amount of discomfort and dissatisfaction in life. So there are some needs that would never be fulfilled on this side of, the, of our life. I think that part really, really got me. Because it just explains why sometimes, no matter how hard we try, looking for certain things. We never do get them. Apart from certain things, what you find as well is, the minute you get one, another need comes. The minute you get that one, another need comes. So constantly as humans, there is no end to a need. And that just explains that the body knows. We know that this is not the end. And that's why our need is constantly moving. Is a we're not completely happy here because we're not supposed or meant to be here. Um, Earth is not our final destination. We're created for somewhere much better. And so, he says, look around you. Everyone has a problem or an issue. You may have all the money in the world and yet have great health and um, have major health problems. And this happened to Steve Jobs, you remember? Um, when he became so ill and apparently one of the comments he made was the, 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 the hospital bed is the most expensive bed in the world. And why was that? Because when he became so ill, he said he couldn't ask anyone to go and lie on the bed for him. That's just the way life is. So he had all the money in the world, but his health could not, money could not buy his health. Some of us may have great health and struggle with money. Some of us may have so much money and we have no family to even give the money to. Some of us may have so much family but no money to take care of them. And so that's just the way it is. So you find that some things you may just be looking, you know, what's so interesting is most times the person that has the one thinks the other one is having such a great time. You know, you may have so many children and you see the man who's got so much money you say look at how lucky he is and vice versa but everyone has a need everyone has an issue everyone is struggling with something so that's just the way it is we need to allow our heavenly father to dictate and decide for us what our purpose is on this earth some people might have mansions and they're not happy in it because there's nobody that's in it with them. Some people live in certain countries and yet they're not happy. And while other people are in another country saying to themselves, until I'm in that other country, I will not be happy. But unfortunately, you find out that that's not the true, true case because you may get to that country and still not find that happiness. He says, C.S. Lewis observed, all that is not eternal is eternally useless. So anything that's not eternal, eternal means will never end. Anything that's not like that is eternally useless. Bible says we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but we should fix our eyes on, not on what we see, but on what is unseen. So everything we're seeing now, they absolutely mean, mean nothing. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. 
He said a fish will never be happy living on land because it was made for water. Trying to explain why we will never be completely happy living on this earth because we were made for somewhere else. An eagle could never feel satisfied if it wasn't allowed to fly. And so you will never feel completely satisfied on earth because you were made for more. So that's what he was trying to explain. So no matter what you have, there will always be need for more. And I gave the example of, you know, those of us in Nigeria, where everywhere you go, I mean, I visit quite often, and all you're hearing is, when can I go to England? To England. What is required to get a visa to England? Or America, or Europe. And you've heard all these stories, I think I've said in some of my videos, where young girls have been trafficked, uh, trafficked as, as prostitutes to, to different parts of Europe. Young girls! BBC Channel, um, no, Channel 4 in the UK here did a program. And they actually were interviewing these young girls, not, not, not like it was stories, they were interviewing them. And they showed them another video of a young lady in Italy who was being who was a prostitute and going through a really difficult time struggling to pay the person that brought her there and struggling to cope with the you know the bills and all the unhealthy scenario that was going on with what she was doing and yet this lady in Nigeria said she still wants to go and it was shocking but these are the things that you hear just because she's in another country she feels until she goes to this other country, her needs will never be met. So that's exactly how this world is. That thing you don't have, you think until you have it, you will not have peace. But unfortunately, even when you have it, even when they do travel and get there, they will find that it wasn't what they thought it would be. I mean, when I see them and they can't, they can't wait to go to England and I say you have no idea what we go through here. The amount of money we are paying for bills. You will be shocked. I mean, my monthly rent here could cover for a whole year's rent in some places. And, you know, no more regular nice flats in Lagos, in Nigeria. And so it's, it's a matter of, you might think it's so great in the other place until you get there. So you see people who live in mansions and they don't have children to run around and bring their happiness and fun to the mansion and they wish they could have that. They wish they could have children. But those who have children are wishing they could have mansions. So you see people who are absolutely stunning and wish they could uh, concentrate and gain more wisdom or intelligence. You know, people who are extremely beautiful and don't have all it takes to sit down and read and because they are not concentrating, they think their beauty answers you. And then they look at those ones and they think, I wish I could be like them. And then people who are extremely intelligent and could concentrate and sit down and do their work, I think, I wish I could be as beautiful as that. So it's all about people wanting what they don't have. You see, you see people who have said that one, you say the list is endless. Everybody wants that thing they don't have. And yet when they have it, they are still not satisfied. That's why he's explaining that it's just a, it's just something that's been inbuilt in us not to be satisfied because this is not where we're meant to end. I gave another example of married women complaining about their marriages. Oh, my husband's like this, my husband's like that, and you know it just goes on. And then you see a single woman who can't wait to be married because somehow they think until they're married, their life will not be complete. So it's a fatal mistake to assume that God's goal for your life is material prosperity or popular success as the world defines it. So you're thinking, oh yeah, the only way I'm going to be happy is if I have prosperity and if I have success. And this is really, really serious with the younger generation today because they see all these celebrities, the musicians and the movie stars and they all want to be overnight success and they don't want to take their time to understand what life is all about or sit down and read and make sense of things or put their hands down like I teach here which um, my, my home training video is right here I always try to show you where I'm trying to empower women with their hands 
use your hands, create your own business, earn your own money. No, most people don't think like that. All they want is, they, they just want to become overnight success. But then when you're trying to be that, you're losing that major thing, which is you. Because the kind of things you then end up doing are not things that may, may be valuable for your life. Knowing that at the end of it all, it all ends up here. It says abundant life has nothing to do with material abundance. Now that is really something. The faithful, faithfulness to God does not guarantee success in careers or, or ministry. So when you're faithful to God, because you're faithful to God does not necessarily mean that you're going to have an amazing career or that you're going to have an amazing ministry. So that if you're going to church and you know setting up a ministry was your dream because you're faithful, is going to be so successful. No, that is no guarantee. He says, Paul was faithful, yet he ended in prison. This is in the Bible. John the Baptist was faithful, but he was beheaded. Jesus, our Savior, is the Son of God, but he was still crucified. Millions of faithful people have been martyred. They have lost everything. They have come to the end of their, with, of their life with nothing to show for it. But the end of life here is not the end. That's a big spiritual message here. Your time on earth is not the complete story of your life. It takes faith to live on earth as a foreigner. So we now know that we're just foreigners here and that our life does not end here. All that ends here is the physical, egoistic body. The body that probably wants all the earthly things that we can find. And we don't know that our time here is already limited. It has a certain number. It's been told, we've been told it will not exceed this certain number. And that's usually when we are lucky enough that nothing happens to us while young but still we, we, we take it on we take on this role of we want everything that we can we can chase out there and we allow ridiculous things to hold us down we engage our mind because like i said earlier that's how i found myself um, I was run, I'm running my business, I have four children, I'm dealing, struggling with my marital home. And so a lot was beginning to pile up in my mind. And I realized that I had to find a way to spiritually deal with this. But then I remembered, even after reading all this, I remembered something I read in the Bible, um, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And it says there's a time for everything. He said to everything there is a season and a time. To every purpose under the heaven. Time to die. The time to plant and a time to pluck. Pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace, what profit had he that walketh in that wherein he laboreth? He says, I have seen the travel which God had given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also he had set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God made from the beginning to the end. 
I stopped at verse 11. So take your time, read through it. And that just explains everything. There's time for everything. So while you're here, make sure you walk with your God. Let Him guide you so you can find your purpose here on earth. Because the physicalness, the foreignness, the alienness, whatever it is that we're here right now, it's not the end. There's a bigger plan for us. And once you remember that, you find that all the stress and the anger and all the pain disappears. But before we finish today, in my little green notes, I just wrote things that I want us to look at. He said, Lord, remind me how brief my time of life will be. Remind me that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away. That was the first thing we read when we started. Psalm 39 verse 4. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm here on earth for just a while. That's Psalm 119 verse 19. And then the question, because usually at every chapter, at the end of every chapter, he asks us a question. So he says, how should the fact that life on earth is such is just a temporary assignment change the way I am living right now? How should the fact that life on earth is just a temporary assignment change the way I'm living right now? So now you want to start asking yourself, now that you're fully aware that what we're doing here is temporary, how is it going to change the way you see things? Thank you so much for being here with me, reading this book. Thank you for watching it to the end. Please remember to share with your friends on YouTube. Please remember to subscribe because the more we come out with this thing, the more you get to know what we're doing then. And on Facebook and Instagram, remember to just tune in whenever you see that we're live. Um, it's a 40 day program, so we're still slowly ticking away the days. I'm hoping and I know that by God's grace, by the end of these 40 days, we will completely be reborn, be new beings, be ready to face the world as it is. So thank you so much and God bless you eternally. Oh yeah, they're always pink anyway, so. <laughs>